I think we're going to hold out on Sunday school today so they can get an impartation from our brother. Amen? So um, I see we have a newcomer. What's your name? Laurie, where are you from? California. Oh, nice to have you. Are you living in this area now? Are you living in this area now? Okay. Oh, good. Nice to have you with us. God bless you. Amen. How'd you hear about us? Okay, great. Awesome. Awesome to have you with us. Amen. Praise God. We're going to have um, our evangelist missionary, Mike Kelly, come and share what happened to him again. Seems like everything, something happens with this guy, you know. But we're going to have him come back again this year. We want to give our brother most of the time this morning. And um, how many are glad to be in God's house? Amen. And it's good to be in God's house. Amen. And uh, praise God. And what are your names? Louie and Laurie. Oh, nice to have you guys with us. Praise God. Nice to have you. Amen. So, um. Are you excited to hear God's word today? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here. Um, pray for those who you don't see. Uh, I know Bobby and uh, his family's on vacation. They'll be back later on this evening. And also for um, Leisha and for Gordon and for Darren, keep them in your prayers. Bob Lewis, keep him in your prayers. Um, and pray that God will continue to do the work that he wants to do. Amen. Praise God. We're so grateful for that. Thank you for your uh, coming this morning. And so without further ado, we want to welcome our brother this morning. Um, Forest Glory Christian Assembly welcomes Bishop Adams. Louisa. Huh? Luesha. Luesha from Malawi, Africa. Amen. All the way from Africa. And my brother was there last year, wasn't it? Two years ago already? Oh, my word, two years ago. So God bless you, Bishop. Will you come and bless us this morning with God's word? Take your liberty this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. What a blessing to be here with you this morning. I want to sincerely thank Pastor Robert for your kindness and for your love of inviting me here to come and minister this morning. Uh, I, I remember last year you took us for dinner with Pastor Mike and we talked about the work of God, what you are doing here, and I shared what we are doing in Malawi. And you said, a time will come when I, come, I would come and minister. So the Lord made it possible this time that I should come and minister to your church. Thank you so much. Thank you for the lovely church. Thank you for having me here. I pray that God will bless you and God will touch you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, as you have seen, I come from Malawi. Malawi is the smallest country in part of Africa. Africa is huge. The continent is huge. But uh, there are many countries in Africa. So Malawi is a country in the southern part of Africa. We are called the warm heart of Africa. So Malawians are warm-hearted people. When you come to Malawi, you feel the warmth. <laughs> we are surrounded by Tanzania. Some call it Tanzania. On the northeast, and then on the southeast, uh, we share with Mozambique while on the western part we share with Zambia. Malawi, uh, so the countries on, on that part. Fort, about 40% of the country is covered with water. It's a lake. So, and the other percentage is land. So you can see, it's a landlocked country. We have no ports, no sea. You can see we're within. But uh, uh, we thank God Though we are among us the poorest country, the Lord is moving in Malawi. God is still reigning in Malawi. Amen. What are we doing in Malawi? 
after finishing my studies at Zion, I think that's the school where Pastor Robert went and Pastor Mike, in 2001, I went back to my country um, to preach the word. There are so many students who come from Africa, when they come to the U.S., they never go back to their countries because they see the poverty and the hardship which they have in Africa. But after finishing my studies, I felt the Lord telling me to go back to my country. I thank God I obeyed the Lord to go back to Africa. So when I went back to Africa in 2001, there are three things which the, lay, the Lord laid upon my heart. Number one is to plant churches in every town, in every village in Malawi. God laid upon my heart that every town must hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We started planting churches in every town. As I'm speaking now, since my graduation, we have planted more than 100 churches in every town in the nation of Malawi. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our forefathers who have been there before, they planted some churches in the northern part of Malawi. But we said we are going to continue with the gospel. You remember the gospel, uh, the, the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You shall receive the power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost end of the earth. We said we are not going to be in one place. We are going to plant churches in the southern and central part of Malawi, which we have been doing. God has been so faithful. We have gone to some Muslim places where it was very hard to reach there. But because we carried the message of hope, the gospel has been accepted in those Muslim places. God gave us favor to reach those Muslim places where it was very hard in the southern part of Malawi. We praise the name of the Lord. We have not only been planting churches, we have also been doing uh, church building, roofing churches. So that when we plant a church there, the, our brothers and sisters are worshiping there, we have to provide some roofing for them. You know, I don't know, those of you who have been to Africa, Pastor Mike has been to Africa. Uh, there are some brothers and sisters who worship under a tree. Therefore, we need to provide some roofing for them. God has been faithful. We have been roofing a number of churches so that our brothers may have a roof in the church. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number three, we have also been training leaders for the end time harvest. You might understand that church planting must go together with training leaders. You need more leaders to be trained so that they go into the planting of the work of God or preaching the gospel. You need more leaders to be trained. So we've been doing that, training leaders, having short course trainings, empowering them, commissioning them, sending them in the field. When Pastor Mike came, he saw how we send the leaders, we train them, we have a, a small trading uh, centers where we train those leaders and send them in the field. This is what we are doing in Malawi. I pray that as I minister today, God will speak to you and stand with us of what we are doing in Malawi. God is moving in the nation of Malawi. We have seen the grace of God. There is revival going on. The Spirit of God is moving, touching lives, saving people, bring hope to the hopeless people in the name of Jesus. Pray with us as we preach the gospel in Africa. I know this is the first time I have been here, so when you remember us, pray for Malawi. Pray for Malawi, that Jesus may continue being glorified in that nation. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you this morning. We bless you, God, because you have given us the opportunity to share the word and to hear your word. I speak in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit will minister to us, O oh God. You know what we need, O oh God. We may not know what we need, but you know what we need. We speak in the name of Jesus that the Holy Ghost will speak to us for that thing which you are looking for, that thing which you are lacking in our midst, O oh God. May you speak to us, O oh God, that as we come out of this place, we will say the Lord has met my need. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask your presence to be with us. We ask your glory to be glorified in this place in the name of Jesus. I speak that everybody who came in this place, O oh God, will never go back the same. 
but will go back transformed and renewed and having hope in the Lord. In the name of Jesus, may your presence be in this place, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Turn our Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. I know it's a scripture which seems to be very familiar with us about the dry bones. Ezekiel 37. If you are struggling to find Ezekiel 37, uh, I think it's after lamentation. After lamentation, then you find Ezekiel. Just before Daniel. I'll read verse 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass among them round about, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and lo, they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, prophesy, every, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you may come to life. I will put sinews on you and make flesh grow back on you, over you with skin and put breath in you that you may come alive and you will know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded and I prophesied there and there was a noise and behold a rattling and the bones came together born to his bone. And I looked and behold sinews were on them and flesh grew and skin covered them but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prof prophesy son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they come to life. Verse 10, so I prophesied as he, communicate, as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they came to life, and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Verse 11, then, then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our home, our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord, of, the Lord God, behold, I'll open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. My people, I will bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves and caused you to come out, to come up out of your graves, my people. I will put my spirit within you and you will come to life and I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and done it, declares the Lord. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. To thee be glory, honor, and power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The story of Ezekiel is one of the powerful stories. God performing miracles, giving life to the bones which were dead. Have you ever been to a graveyard by yourself? Nobody is there. <laughs> or how would you feel you are in a graveyard? You see only dry bones. You are by yourself. Nobody is there. You see the bones, dry bones, dry bones all over. I hope you'll be scared. There's a picture which comes to my mind when I read this story. 
is a picture of a country called Rwanda. They had a big genocide in 1994. There's a documentary which talks about Rwanda. When thousands of people died in a day, there are two tribes fighting each other, the Hutus and Tutsis. There was a day a group of about a thousand Christians, they escaped in the church. This is a true story. They escaped in the church, about a thousand of them. Then the enemies came and slaughtered all of them with machetes. When you read this documentary, you see that you could see dead bodies all over Rwanda. People had no opportunity to bury their relatives dead bodies all over the country. Thank God because God is still loving his people. I have met some friends from Rwanda when I talk to them. They have the love of Jesus. Today there's revival going in, in the land of Rwanda. When you see people of Rwanda, they are so tender. Whenever they pray, you see tears coming out of their eyes. But it is full of joy because Jesus is reigning in the land of Rwanda. When there's dryness in a country, dryness in a land, and when God moves, joy comes back. Hallelujah. Ezekiel was a prophet who was in the exile in Babylon. He prophesied these prophecies when he was in Babylon. Ezekiel was one of those prophets who used so many symbols, so many illustrations to bring a point so that people may understand. Here Ezekiel is giving about the illustration about the dry bones where God is speaking to him about the children of Israel. The prophet is talking about the children of Israel who had lost hope. By then Judah was made captive by the Babylonians. They had no hope and they're crying. Is there any hope for us? But historically, we may see that in 1948, Israel was made a nation, when, uh, was declared a nation back. But this prophecy goes beyond when the Lord God himself will reign and all of us, even the children of Israel, will be brought back. But what is, what is he talking about? What can we get from the whole prophecy of what God is, spoke, is speaking through uh, through this man Ezekiel. There's one question which is there which we need to answer. Chapter 37, verse 3. The Lord spoke to e Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live again? Ezekiel said, Lord, you know it better. There's a time when we go through some challenges, some difficult times in our lives, and we have questions. God, how would you see these things? The Lord may be speaking to us. Do you think there's hope for you? Faith will always answer, God, I know there's hope for me. There are times when we don't have the answers. We don't know how to go about the situation we're going through. We have to believe, God, you know it better. Ezekiel said, Lord, you know it better. The Lord said, prophesy to these bones. Ezekiel prophesied, the Bible says there were bones scattered all over. As Ezekiel prophesied, the bones started coming together. The neck bone had to find its neighbor. <laughs> the hip bone had to come back. The shoulder bone had to come back. Ezekiel said, the, the Bible says Ezekiel saw there was a big sound of rattling, a bone coming its bone. They are coming together. Ezekiel started seeing these bones come together. Imagine these were dry bones. The Bible says very dry. And there were very many, millions of them. But as he started prophesying, these bones started to come together. But the Lord said, Ezekiel, you are not yet done. You know what? I want to speak on the theme is, it's not yet done until the Lord says it's done. Until the Lord says it's done. It's not yet over until the Lord says it's over. Is it, God said, Ezekiel, can you prophesy again? He prophesied. 
Then the flesh started coming unto the bones. He sees them tendons coming together, muscles coming together. The, the, uh, all the flesh was coming together. But it was just a person standing. It was just a skeleton a person standing, and there was nothing. Then the Lord said, Ezekiel, prophesy to the four winds so that breath should come unto these bones. Ezekiel prophesied to the four corners of the world. And the, and the, the fresh, I mean, the spirit of the Lord came upon these, these, the, these dry bones which were so dry. Then the Bible says it was an exceedingly abundant, a great army which was standing there. Hallelujah. From dry bones to a great army. From dry bones to a great army. Some of us, we might be going through some dry moments. But the Lord is not seeing that dry moments. He's seeing hope in you. And maybe some of us might be asking a question. Can this thing come again? Is there any hope for me? The Lord says, I'm still having hope for you. I speak in the name of Jesus this morning. Maybe some of us who are going through some dry moments, we are going into a valley. I want to speak to us this morning. The Lord says, I see you. There's life in you. These dry bones, which were dry, the Bible says it turned up to be a great army. The Lord says to the children of Israel, you are crying that your hope is lost, but I have hope for you. I'll bring back to your destination. I'll bring back to the place where I made it for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you're asking a question. Is there any hope for me? Yes, there's hope for you. Is there something remaining for me? Yes, the Lord says, I have hope for you. I have some good news to you. The Lord sees something in you. What does the valley represent? When you talk about the valley, I said Ezekiel is a prophet who speaks so much about the valley, about illustrations, and he uses so many illustrations, so many symbolism. Just verse 15, after that, he's, he's using a symbol about the stick where the children of Israel uh, uh, were gathering. Joseph, Ephraim, and others, they made one stick, and now they join with, uh, with, with Joseph. So he's using so many symbols to, to bring to a point. But here he's talking about a valley. As I was studying this, I remembered about the valleys in Africa. I come from Africa. What's a valley? A valley is a flat land. In valleys in Africa, it is the breeding place for mosquitoes. It is very hot. Now, when mosquitoes are many in Africa, that's the place where malaria is very much. People die of malaria those especially who stay in lowland or in flatland, in valleys. You don't find malaria in the highlands or in the mountains. Malaria is on the flatland. So the valley is not a very good place. It's very hot. So many sicknesses. What's a valley? A valley is a place in Africa, especially where I come from, you find so many snakes because it is rather hot and snakes stay there. Most snakes do not stay in the upper highlands when it is cold. They come in the valley. A valley is a place where so many uh, things happen. You find swamps. Swamps are not very good. There are so many problems which are found there in the valley. What is a valley? Life in a valley can represent a life which is very difficult. Life in a valley may mean when your hope is gone. Life in a valley may mean when you are confused, you don't know how to go about. Life in a valley may mean when you are at a crossroad, you are failing to make a decision. Life in a valley is when everybody seems to hate you and nobody loves you. Life in a valley may mean when you have a long, long chronic disease and that disease seems not to be going away. Life in a valley may mean when nothing seems to work for you. Life in a valley may mean when you are misunderstood and everybody misunderstands you. Life in a valley may mean when you are lonely, nobody standing with you and you are crying, where are you, God? Life in a valley is when you are in a depression and you don't feel anything will work out. 
Life in a valley is when you are lonely. Ezekiel was by himself. Nobody was with him and was saying, God, are you here? Can this, God is asking, can these things come to life? He says, God, you know better. Life in a valley is when you see there's no way out of your situation. But the Lord says, I still have hope for you. We go sometimes in a times when there's, there's life, it's life in a valley, where there's self-condemnation, where there's insecurity, where you are criticized, when you have financial problems, family problems. We seem to be going into a valley. But God still has hope for you. When Ezekiel was in this situation, he said the bones were so dry, there was no hope for them. And the children of Israel says, there's no hope for us. We are cut off. We are completely dried up. Sometimes we pray a prayer. We say, God, let me die. Let me just die. But God said, you are not going to die because I have hope for you. But why does God allow us to go through the valley? Let me share some three things. Number one, God may allow you to go through the valley. It's God's will for us to go through some valleys. Why? When we see Jesus Christ, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, near the Valley of Kidron, Jesus was crying and praying to his father. He said, oh, father, if you are willing to take away this cup from me, but his father did not take up his cup from Jesus. The Lord went into that valley of Kidron. That's the, 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 uh, it was near the valley of Kidron in Gethsemane. Jesus was preparing for something good for us, for you and I. The cries and tears of Jesus was the preparation for the entire world. God allowed his son to go through that valley. God allowed his son to go through that valley so that you and I may have salvation in the name of Jesus. God allows us to go through the valley though that somewhere, somehow, salvation may come to somebody. You may not know why you are going through that valley, but the Lord would like to train you so that you stand in the temptation. It was in the valley of Kidron, in the Gethsemane land, when Jesus prayed and the angel of the Lord came and encouraged him. It was in that valley when Jesus prayed for the entire world that God forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. The Bible says when Jesus was praying, the sweat which came out of his, his body was mixed like blood because it was in intense praying. Something was being birthed in the valley. When you're in the valley, something is being birthed. Something is coming out. New life comes out. You are in the old, but when you come out of that valley, new life is coming out of that. So the valley is good for us. Hallelujah. Why does God allow us to go through the valley? We see Joseph in Genesis chapter 37, verse 14, when his father sent him to go and see how his brothers are doing. The Bible says Joseph went to the valley of Hebron. It was in the valley where the vision was birthed. The valley of Hebron, Genesis 37, verse 14, God knew that Joseph needed to go through the valley for his promotion to come. For you to receive the good things from the Lord, God may allow you to go through the valley. Joseph was thrown into the pit. He went into prison, but from there he went to palace. The only way for Joseph to go through that process, he had to go through the valley. He had to go through some temptation. He was tempted. He was thrown into prison. He was, he, he, he was left to die. But God said, I have a vision for you. You know what? When you go through the valley, the devil may be trying to kill you. But God said, you are not going to kill my vision. There's a vision for you. God says, there's something for you. Praise the name of the Lord. God may allow you to go through the valley to bring a vision, to renew your vision which you have given you. He may allow you to go through some difficult times so that he may train you to be a warrior. 
You know, the Bible talks about the children of Israel in Exodus. Exodus chapter 13, the Lord said, I am allowing you to go through the wilderness so that I may train you for battle. Hmm. So sometimes God allows us to go through some wilderness to train us how to pray, to train us how to fight. When you are in the valley, it's time to pray. When you are in the valley, it's time to fight. So that the devil will never win. I know it's hard when you are crying, but God is training you to fight so that you should be a warrior in the valley which you are going through. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you're in the valley, it's time to fight. Don't lose the battle in the valley. It's time to fight. It's time to pray. It's time to seek the face of God. In the valley is when God is training you. Sometimes God brings us in a valley so that he may remove the Egypt. He said to the children of Israel, I'm allowing you to take you through that process so that I may remove the mentality of Egypt. The Egyptian mentality. Some of us who have brought all the mentality in the church, the Egyptian mentality, the world thing we have brought in the church, God said, I'm going to bring you in the valley so that I may remove the Egyptian mentality from your mind. Yes, the Lord may bring you through that so that he may remove the flesh, the work of the flesh. You are, God, this is painful. He says, yes, I'm taking you the mentality of Egypt, the work of the flesh, the flesh pride, arrogance, disobedience, Rebellious. He says, I'm bringing you out so that you should not, you should not enter into my presence with that rebellious spirit. You should not enter in my presence with that, that spirit of bitterness and anger and forgiveness. So the Lord is trying to remove those things. He said, I, I want to take out that sin from you. That's why he, he's bringing you into the, into, the, into the valley. But do you know what? He wants you to obey him. When you go through the valley, he wants you to obey him. The valley is good for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Lord may bring us into the valley to transform us, to renew us, to bring a new vision, to bring his will upon our lives so that his will be done. So what the Lord is looking from us is to obey. When you're in a valley, obey the Lord. Follow the Lord. And the Lord will bring you out of that. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Are you going through some valleys? The valley is good for you. The Bible says in verse 1 and 2, he said, The Spirit of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me, the, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and I was moved by the Spirit to, bring, to go into the valley. You know what? What the Lord, sometimes when you are valley, you are in the valley, that is where the presence of God is there. You are not by yourself. When you are in the valley, the presence of God is there. The Lord is with you. You are not by yourself. He is with you. You may not see his steps. He's with you. The Bible says in Ezekiel 37, uh, uh, for Ezekiel, the Bible says, the hand of the Lord led me. Do you know what it means? As I was studying, studying this part, verse 1 and 2, it means that the presence of God was upon Ezekiel. The glory of God was upon Ezekiel. When it means the hand of God, it means the glory of God was upon Ezekiel. But you know what? He didn't know much about it. Except that he knew that the Lord was leading. When you are in a valley, several times we don't know that God is with us. When we are in a painful situation, we forget that God is with us. I want to encourage us this morning. You may be going some difficult times in a painful situation. I want to encourage us that the Lord is with you. God has not forgotten you. The devil may seem to tell you God is not with you. But I want to speak to us this morning. God is with you. When Ezekiel was in that moment, the Spirit of the Lord was with him in that valley, in that dry bones. You say, Pastor, I'm going through some dry moments. Do you think God is with me? Yes, God is with you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. God is with you. It doesn't matter what you are going through. God is with you. The Spirit of the Lord is with you in the name of Jesus. Point number two. The valley is not a permanent place. It's not a permanent place. In verse 12, the Bible says, 
Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I'll open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. And I'll bring you, my people, unto the land of Israel. Do you know that the valley is not a permanent place for you? You might be going through some pain. You might be going through some issues in your life. But let me assure you this morning, I speak in the name of Jesus, that the Lord will have mercy upon you. He will bring you out of that situation in the name of Jesus. You might be having your own valley. Maybe you are struggling with cancer. Maybe you are struggling with some family problems. Maybe you are going through some family problems and financial problems. Maybe you are having some issues in your life. I want to speak to you this morning. That is not a permanent place for you. God spoke to the children of Israel that the situation you are right now is not a permanent place for you. I have a good place for you. You might be going through some issues in your life which you are failing to solve them. But the Lord says, I have a destiny for you. When Joseph was in the valley of Hebron with his brothers, he was cast into the pit. Genesis chapter 37. When Joseph was cast into the pit, he went to prison. But that place, prison, was not the permanent place for him. God had a better place for Joseph. Oh, you might be crying, say, God, are you there? Why are you allowing me to go through the valley? Yes, the valley was good for you, but that is not a permanent place for you. God has something good for you. Listen, some of you, you feel your vision is dead. God says your vision is not dead. I'll bring you to the place which I have for you. It's not yet over until the Lord says it's over. Keep on fighting until the Lord brings you to your destination. He says, I'll bring you out of that situation and bring you to a place of my destination. Bring you to a place of my will. He has something for you. He is the Lord of heavens and will bring you to his position. The Bible says, Numbers 23 verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and he has not uh, uh, done it. When the Lord says, he will do it. He is God who says, I will deliver you, and he will deliver you. Man may have said, we want to watch you die. But God says, you are not going to die. Man have, may have said, we want to see your vision die. But the Lord says, I have a vision for you. Your vision is not going to die. Man might, might have put you out that you are nothing before them. But God says there is hope for you. Hallelujah. The devil may be speaking that I'm going to kill you with diabetes. The devil may be saying I'm going to kill you with cancer. But the Lord says I cast out that cancer in the name of Jesus. I'm going to bring you out of that cancer in the name of Jesus. The devil may be saying, I want to see your family dying. I want to see your family completely destroyed. But the Lord said, I have some good news for your family. Your family will not be destroyed. You are going to stay again. The devil may be saying, your children are going to die. Your children are not going to be Christian. But you keep on praying. The Lord said, I'll bring your children to a life of salvation in the name of Jesus. The devil may be saying, this problem has come to stay. But the Lord said, I'll bring you out of that problem. I'm the Lord who saves you. I'm the Lord who redeems you. He is a God who redeems us. He is a God who gives us hope. He is a God who gives us hope. When there's no hope, when there's no hope, he gives us hope. And will bring us out. He is the Lord who brings us hope. When all hope is gone. When all hope is lost, when everything is gone, the Lord said, I'll make a way where there's no way. I'll bring you out of that situation. He is the Lord. There's nothing impossible with him. When Lazarus was dead, in John chapter, chapter 11, when Lazarus was dead, the, the Lord said, where is Lazarus? He said, Lazarus, come forth. He brought life into the dead Lazarus. When Lazarus was dead, Martha and, Marita, Ma Martha and Mary, they were go their hope was gone. They said, our brother Lazarus is gone. Jesus says, I'll bring life to Lazarus. Jesus spoke, said, Lazarus, come forth. I speak in the name of Jesus, that the Lord will speak to your situation, that life will come forth. In the name of Jesus, for every situation which was dead, I speak in the name of Jesus. 
life to come forth in the name of Jesus. Every dry moment I speak right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that God will bring life. The way Jesus spoke to Lazarus, he said, Lazarus, come forth. Life came out of Lazarus, the, the one who was dead for three days. Lazarus came to life. When the Lord speaks, there's nothing which is too hard for him. The Lord is able to bring life where there was dryness, where there was darkness, where there was deadness. The Lord is able to bring life. I want to encourage you right now. You need to prophesy to a situation, to a dry moment. Speak to a dry moment. Speak to your pro you prophesy to those dry moments. Prophesy to that sickness that I'm going to live in the name of Jesus. Prophesy to that situation. You might be going through some dry moments. Prophesy to a family. You say, devil, you are not going to take my family. I speak life to my family in the name of Jesus. Devil, you are not going to take my job. I speak life to my job. I speak life to my business. You know, there are some things which you need to prophesy to yourself. If you don't speak, they'll not come. Ezekiel was commanded to prophesy the bones and the life came in. You have to prophesy to some issues for life to come in. You speak with your mouth and God will bring it to come to pass. The Bible says, whatever Ezekiel spoke, things came to life. Because Ezekiel prophesied, there are some things which God is waiting for us to speak by faith. It was by faith that Ezekiel spoke. If Ezekiel could not preach, I mean, could not prophesy, maybe life would not have come. So Ezekiel obeyed the word of God and he prophesied to those things. He spoke a word of life to the bones and life came in. There are some things God is calling us to speak to those things. Speak with your faith. Speak with your word. Speak by faith and you see God making changes because God has given us power. He said has given us authority over the powers of the enemy. Whatever we speak in the name of Jesus, he does it. So he follow that. So there are some issues in our lives which God is waiting for us to speak. Pray and speak. Pray and talk. Talk to God and prophesy and they will come to pass. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Every problem has an expiry date. When you buy food stuff in Walmart, they have expiry date. They expire on June 20th. So I speak that every problem which is in your life has an expiry date. As we mentioned, expire, it must expire in the name of Jesus. <laughs> every, every problem must have an expiry date. Mark this, you have to say, the new problem, you have a day, a day of expiration. You have to come out of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. It must go. Because the Lord says, in the name of Jesus, you are not going to die in your valley, but you are going to come out in the name of Jesus. You will not die in that valley. You have to come out by faith in the name of Jesus. Point number three. The valley is, not a, the valley is a place of revival. We saw that the valley is not a permanent place, but the valley is a place of revival. In Ezekiel 37 verse 14, the Bible says, and I shall put my spirit in you. You shall live, and I shall place you in your land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, declares the Lord. So the word spirit and breath in Hebrew and Greek, they're interchangeably used. They mean one thing. Spirit and breath means, uh, in Greek, say pneuma. They're the interchangeably used. It means the Holy Spirit. And here the Lord says, I'm going to bring my spirit upon you. And you are going to live again. We read earlier on that when the spirit of God came upon this, there were a great exceeding army. So what the Lord is saying, I'm going to bring some new life in you. Yes, it was dead and dry, but there's hope for us to have new life through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. In, in, uh, in Jerusalem, Jerusalem was situated in a hill country. Jerusalem was on a, in a hill country. So Jerusalem, for the pilgrims to go to Jerusalem, they had to go through the valley. The pilgrims to go to worship the Lord in Jerusalem, they have to go through the valley. So what it means that there's no mountain top without the valley. You have to go through the valley before you receive a cool breeze in the mountain. Before you receive revival in your life, you have to go in your knees and seek the face of God. 
When you pray for many hours seeking the face of God in your valley, then God brings freshing, a, a refreshing, a refreshing, a refreshing spirit in your heart. After you go through much praying and seeking the face of God, you have to go through the valley to go to the mountaintop. God wants us to go through the valley of prayer and seeking his face so that revival may come in this place. Hallelujah. So he says, I'll put my spirit in you so that you may live to a destination. It is only the spirit of God which can give us our destination. When we have the revival of God in our lives is when we have a destination. In other words, the Lord is saying, you have cried enough. But I'm going to give you some refreshing moment right now. I speak in the name of Jesus that there will be revival in this place. I speak in the name of Jesus that there will be restoration in the name of Jesus. Maybe the devil has stolen from us, has stolen our children, has stolen some people. I speak there will be restoration in this place in the name of Jesus. And there will be revival in this place in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. May the Spirit of God bring revival in this place. Let's pray for revival in this place that God will bring more people to his salvation. More people will be saved. More people will not know Jesus as the Lord and Savior in the name of Jesus. Oh, let's cry for the spirit of revival in this place. The Lord said, I'll pour my spirit in the latter days. Young men will prophesy and the Lord is looking for revival in these days. May he pour his spirit in this place. May we be the people who are seeking his face so that his glory might be manifested in this place. The Lord is looking to pour his spirit upon this place. Are you dry? But God says, I will pour my spirit upon you. Maybe we feel our lives are dry. God said, it's not yet done. I have something new for you. Psalms 84 verse 6, the Bible says, passing through the valley of Baca. The valley of Baca, it was the valley of weeping. It was the valley of crying. It was the valley of uh, uh, sorrow. It was the valley of tears. Psalms 84 verse 6. Passing through the valley of Baca makes it a place of springs. The air rains covers with blessing. In other ways, when you have gone through some pain, some sorrows, then you come to a place where the Lord brings you some cool breeze. The Lord speaks to your heart and you have hope. This is the time of hope after you have cried for many times. Maybe you have gone through some valleys and crying, but the Lord said, the spring of revival is coming in you. You have been crying, traveling for many years, seeking the face of the Lord. God says, I'm going to bring some refreshing in your moment. You have been seeking the Lord, crying, say, God, where are you now? He says, you have been passing through some difficult time. He says, but there's refreshing coming in your spirit right now. May the fresh spirit of the Lord come upon us. Fresh Holy Spirit come upon us. Fresh Holy Spirit, come upon us. Oh, Holy Spirit, come upon us. We pray for the Spirit of the Lord to move in this place. May the Spirit of God touch us. May the glory of God follow in this place. May we see the revival in this New England. May we see revival in this place, Rhode Island. May we see the revival in this uh, Massachusetts. May we see revival in New Bedford. May we see the fresh Holy Ghost coming upon these people in the name of Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit. Church, we can pray for revival. I feel we can stand now. I feel we can, let, we can let, let's stand, let's stand, let's stand, if it's okay. You know, the three types, the Lord was speaking to me this morning, the three types of people, three types of people, three groups of people, that those who are completely lost, that those who are completely lost, they have no hope. The Lord was speaking to me this morning, that as a church, sometimes we forget, we forget all this, that some people are completely lost, they have no hope. The Lord is thinking about those people. We need to cry for those people who are completely lost. They have no hope. God is after those people who have no hope. We have to cry that revival will bring when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. We will move and God touch them. They are lost in the world. God is crying for them. They should come back to him. Number two, the other, the other group is the, the, those people who come to church. They just come to church just before the sake of coming. They don't know Jesus Christ. They just come to the church because maybe their parents are telling them to come. Maybe their wife or the husband says, let's go to church. There are some people who are in the church. They are not committed to the work of God. The Lord wants to revive those people. 
you are some of you who are just in the church you don't know why you are in the church i speak in the name of jesus that the holy spirit would like to bring you to a knowledge that you are in the church because god wants you to be in the church but there are some people who come to church for nothing they don't know any reason then number three the people who know the truth the people who are saved who have the truth of jesus christ and if you know the Lord as your Savior, you are committed to the work of the Lord. The Lord is calling you to pray for those who are lost. The Lord is calling you to search those who are lost. The Lord is calling you to cry that God may bring revival in this place in the name of Jesus. I don't know which place are you. Maybe you don't know, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you have no salvation in your life, the Lord is calling you for salvation. The Lord is calling you to know him. That even when you go through some valleys, you go through some problems, the Lord will still speak to you. If you want to receive Jesus as your personal savior, this is the day of your salvation. Come to Jesus. The Lord will save you and will give you hope because the Lord loves you. That's why you are here. May the Lord touch you. If you need salvation, I speak in the name of Jesus. You can receive Jesus this morning in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord loves you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Spirit of God is this morning. I'm praying for those right now who are going through some types of valleys. You might be going through some difficulties in your life. And you are crying, say, God, have you forget, forgotten me? Why are you allowing me to go through this valley? My brother and my sister, God is allowing you to go through that valley so that you may learn to pray. It's not time for you to cry and sit there. It's time to seek the face of God in your situation. I pray for those who are going through some difficulties right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for those who are going through some valleys. I speak in the name of Jesus that you are going to bring life in that valley in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are sick with cancer, those who are sick with sicknesses, diabetes, any sickness which has been there, chronic sickness, any problem, lung problems, sickness of the of the, of the blood system i speak life right now in the name of jesus christ i speak that there'll be life in this place every dry moments i speak that to be broken i pray that the fresh holy ghost will break the fire of the holy ghost will break every sickness the fire of the holy ghost will break everything with the devil has brought in this place in the name of jesus those who are going through the valley God, I pray that there is hope in the name of Jesus. I speak hope right now. Let the Holy Spirit bring the spirit of hope and faith to trust in you, God. Bring them out of this valley, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord. Holy Ghost, come. I pray for the revival to come upon this place, oh God. Oh, church, let's pray for the spirit of revival in this place. That there will be restoration of those things the devil has stolen. Church, let's pray. Uh, each, each one of us pray. Open your eyes. Speak for revival. Speak for the spirit of God. Open your mouth right now. Speak for revival. Speak the Holy Ghost to move in this place. Open your mouth. Speak for the Holy Ghost to move. The Holy Ghost move. The spirit of the Lord to move. Open your mouth. Pray for the, the spirit of God. The spirit of revival in this place, in this church. Open your mouth. Speak of revival. Holy Ghost revival, Holy Spirit revival, come in this place. Holy Spirit revival, come in this place. We cry, Holy Ghost revival. We cry, Holy Ghost revival, come in this place. We cry, Holy Ghost revival, come in this place. Oh, Roma Moshe, take care of the Rababa. Here is the Rama, the Rabo, shake it, take care of Mama. In the area, Babo, shake it, take care of Kuria, Baba. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Holy Mama Mandarabo Shikiriya Mashatarababo. Praise on, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship him, we need you, Lord. Worship him, worship him. Praise his holy name, praise his holy name. Thank you, Holy Spirit Revival. Thank you, Holy Spirit Revival in this place. Holy Spirit revival in this place in the name of 
Jesus. Iria mama shenderi ya baba, shake it area baba. Iria mama narabo shenderi ya mama mama. Holy Spirit revival in this place. Holy Spirit revival in this place. Holy Spirit revival. Holy Spirit revival. Holy Spirit revival. Holy Spirit revival in this place. Iria mama shakata baba. Ama mama noro baba shake it. Iria mama narabo shake it area baba. Iria mama noro baba shake it area baba noro baba shake baba. Holy Spirit revive on this place. Holy Spirit revive on this place. Holy Spirit revive on this place. Oh, Rabo Shenaria Mama Mama Noroba. Oh, Rabo Sheke Teria Baba. Oh, Rababa Sheke Teria Baba. Oh, Rababa Shaka Teria Baba. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, pour your spirit on this place. Pour your spirit God upon this place. Pour your spirit in this place, oh God. Pour your spirit in this place, oh God. Holy God, oh, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, in this place. We need you, Lord, in this place. We need you, Lord, in this place. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we bless you, God. We worship you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hunger for Jesus. Hunger for Jesus. Hunger for Jesus for the Holy Spirit revival. Hallelujah. Pray and revival. Pray and revival. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.